Hi everyone and welcome to my new tutorial. In this video I will teach you why you should never use delay note in your game and which note you should use instead. Let's get started. I'm in my third person template. So let's open the third person template. So let's add one arrow component. And I'll name this spawn explosion underscore location. So this is the arrow I have added. I'll put it somewhere over here. And let's go to the event graph. And let's right click and type keyboard. So when I press a button, something is going to happen. In the top right corner, when you click on this keyboard, you can assign any key to press. So I'm going to make it 1. Now when I press 1, something will happen from here. So I will get the spawn explosion arrow. And right click, spawn emitter, add location. And I will spawn an explosion. So we are going to spawn visual effects and the location of the arrow. So get world location. Location with the location. And let's use the starter content explosion. Now when I play the game, when I press one, I have this explosion happening. Back to our graph. Let me just put this on the side like this. So let's say after one second, we want to have another explosion at the same place. What you usually can see in other tutorials is right click and type delay. And let's connect these nodes. And let's say after one second, I will just copy this. And after one second, we're going to have another explosion at the same place. Now when I press 1, after 1 second, we have another explosion. Now why is this bad? Back to the graph. This delay is bad because when you trigger this, everything else after this node, depending on the time over here, everything else will wait for the time. Which means Whatever code you have over here, let's say something more complex, when you hit this node, it's going to be like a sudden stoppage. So like this, boom. And then you wait, you wait, you wait, and another code. And what you can usually see in other tutorials, you can put another delay, let's say three seconds, let's get that completed, and let's type reroute node, and then you are going to connect it over here. Now let's see what's going to happen now. So we are pressing one, we are triggering our code, and then we wait. So the whole code over here is going to wait for this time over here. And then we're going to execute that code, and another wait, and it's going to happen this again because we have reroute of this delay, and it's going to happen again. Now let's see. So I'm pressing one only once. And this is going to happen forever because we have made a loop. So this loop is from here. So this is bad because you're stopping the whole code to execute while this timer is on, while this duration. Now let's see what we can do instead. So I'm gonna remove this on the top for now, just to serve as, a, as an example. What we can do is to right click and type custom event. And I will name this something like spawn VFX. And from this red square, you can type timer and we need set timer by event. So I'm gonna detach this. 
So when I press one, we are going to trigger this code. And then we are going to activate this timer. And let's say after one second, the same like here, we want this to happen. I will just copy and paste. So after one second, we want this to happen, to spawn another explosion. So what we have to do is connect with this here. So again, this timer will execute this event, whatever is over here with this connected, based on these two values. And what is the good part is the code will continue running from here. So let me just type print string. And I will type code continues. So what is happening? I'm pressing one. We are executing this code. So the explosion is happening. So this node will run at the same time with this. So there is no wait for this to execute and for this. And at the same time, after one second, this is going to happen. So there is no wait and there is no code blockage. This is how I call it. So this is how your code will run smoothly. Whereas with the delay, everything stops afterwards. So you're pressing one. And everything over here is going to wait for the time. Let's say seven seconds. So the whole code over here, whatever you have something complex, for example, will wait for the time. And this is not good. So in other words, you don't want to stop your code like that. Another analogy, imagine you have a very fast car and you drive at a very high speed and all of a sudden you stop here. And you wait, you wait, you wait, and another high speed from here to here and another wait and so on. So imagine that car, how it's going to be. So drive, stop, drive, stop, and so on. Whereas from here, everything is going to be executed properly. You press one, something happens, and this is happening at the same time. And also don't get confused by this that is coming after this. It can be even like this. This is going to be the same, so the code will execute properly. Because this pin, when you connect them, it means this code is going to be activated. If it's not, nothing's going to happen. And very, very important part for optimization for this timer, you have to stop them after they finish. So usually you can see this in other tutorials, so you can drag over here and promote to variable. Let's say timer. So after one second, we have to stop this timer. So you're taking the variable and you type clear and invalidate timer by handball. So there is an even better way how to optimize this. So we don't need a variable to make this happen. I will delete this and the variable. And also delete the variable from here. Okay, so we don't need this for now. I will just delete it. So what we can do is drag up in from here and type clear and invalidate timer by handle. Disconnect this and right click and type custom event. And you can put a descriptive name, how we can stop this timer. For example, stop VFX timer. Simply connect like this. Now this won't do anything until you call this event, this custom event. Okay, so this is going to be on standby until we call it. And to call it, right click and type the name of this event. So stop VFX timer. And now when I press one, everything happens. After one second, something else happens. And now we are disabling the timer. 
And now this is perfectly optimized code. Again, you can just press D and left click. It's a shortcut for delay. Never use this code. And any tutorials you see about this code, they are not good for optimization. These are just for quickly prototyping. It's not good for your game. It's your choice what you're going to use, but this node is not good for your game. Instead, you have to use timers. Now let's demonstrate. So when I press one, we are going to spawn this explosion. We are going to see this print string. And after one second, we are going to spawn another explosion. And we are going to stop the timer. Now let's see. Now I'm pressing one. All good. I'm pressing again. Pay attention in the top left corner, the print string. So everything runs properly. Another very important detail before we wrap this video. When this timer kicks in, so when you activate this timer, after one second, something will happen and that's it. So the timer will not work anymore. But the thing is, if you don't stop it, with this clear and invalidate timer by handle. If you don't trigger this code, this timer will run in the background. So you have to stop it, even though this time is finished. So remember, this will work forever until you tell it to stop with this. Okay, so I can have a look at the code. This is how you're using timers. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.